Hello all and welcome to today's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say across Mary Blessing, Blessed art thou, donor and new King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please adore I and you speak the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we know our spring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people of Israel. Blessed you, Adonai, and the new king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence here, and then you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is the first read of Matzorah, or the leper. Our first read is Leviticus 14.1 through 15.33. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leprous person for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look. Then, if the case of the leprous disease is healed in the leprous person, the priest shall command them to take him who is still, sorry, who is to be cleansed, two live birds, and a cedar wood, and scarlet yarn, and hyssop. And the priest shall command them to kill one of the birds in the earthenware vessel over fresh water, and he shall take the live bird from the cedarware, cedar wood and the scarlet yarn and the hyssop, and dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water, and he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be cleansed of the leprous disease. Then he shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird go into the open field, and he who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and bathe himself in water and he shall be clean and after that he may come into the camp but live outside his tent seven days and on his seventh day he shall shave off all his hair from his head his beard and his eyebrows and he shall shave off all his hair and then he shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water and he shall be clean On the eighth day he shall take two male lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb a year old without blemish, and a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil and a log of oil. And the priest who cleanses him shall set the man who is to be cleansed in these things before Yahweh at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and the priest shall take one of the male lambs and offer it for a guilt offering along with the log of oil, and wave them for a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall kill the lamb in a place where they kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the place of the sanctuary, for the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the priest. It is the most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the lobe of the right ear of him who is to be cleaned, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it on the palm of his own left hand and dip his right finger in the oil that is on his left hand and sprinkle some oil with his finger seven times before Yahweh and some of the oil that remains in his hand the priest shall put on the lobe of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed and the thumb of the right hand and on the big toe of his right foot he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed then the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh, and the priest shall offer the sin offering to make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanliness. And afterward he shall kill the burnt offering, and the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar. Thus the priest shall make atonement for him, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and cannot afford so much, then he shall take one male lamb for a guilt, guilt offering to be waived, to make atonement for him, and a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering and a log of oil, and two, also two turtle doves or two pigeons, whichever he can afford. The one shall be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering, and on the eighth day he shall bring them for his cleansing to the priests to the entrance of the tent of meeting before Yahweh, and the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering in a log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall kill the lamb of the guilt offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, put it on the lobe of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. 
And the priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle his right finger some of the oil that is on his left hand but seven times before Yahweh. And the priest shall put some of the oil that, it is, that is in his hand on the lobe of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the right, on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, in the place where the blood of the guilt offering was put. And the priest, and sorry, and the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed to make atonement for him before Yahweh. And he shall offer of tur turtle doves or pigeons, whichever he can afford, one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering, along with the grain offering. And the priest shall make atonement bef before Yahweh for him who is being cleansed. This is the law. For him who is a case of leprous disease, who cannot afford the offering for his cleansing. Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When you come into the land of Canaan, which I gave, which I give you for a possession, and I put a case of leprous disease in the house of the land of your possession, then he who enters the house shall come and tell the priest, There seems to me to be some case of disease in my house. Then the priest shall command they that they empty the house before the priest goes to examine the disease, lest all that is in the house be declared unclean. And afterward the priest shall go in and see the house, and he shall examine the disease. And if the disease is in the walls of the house with the greenish or reddish spots, and if it appears to be deeper than the surface, the priest shall go outside the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. And the priest shall come again on the seventh day and look. If the disease has spread in the walls of the house, and the priest shall command that they take out the stones in which the area is diseased, and throw them in, into an unclean place outside the city. And he shall have the inside of the house scraped all around, and a plaster that they scrape off they shall pour in an unclean place outside the city, and they shall take other stones and put them in the place of these stones. Sorry, those stones. And he shall take other plaster and plaster the house. If the disease breaks out again, after he has taken out the stones, scraped the house, and plastered it, then the priest shall go and look. And if the disease has spread in the house, it is a persistent leprous disease in the house, and it is unclean. And he shall break down the house, its stones and timbers, and all the plaster of the house. And he shall carry them out of the city to an unclean place. Moreover, whoever enters the house whilst it is shut up, shall be unclean until evening, and whoever sleeps in the house shall wash his clothes. Whoever eats in the house shall wash his clothes. But if the priest comes and looks, and if the disease has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, for the disease is healed. And for the cleansing of the house he shall take two small birds with a cedar, word and cedar wood and scarlet yarn and hyssop. And he shall kill one of the birds in an earthenware vessel over fresh water, and he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet yarn along with the live bird, and dip them in the blood of the bird that was killed in the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. Thus he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the fresh water, and with the live bird, and with the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet yarn. And he shall let the light bird go out of the city and into the open country. And so he shall make atonement for the house and it shall be clean. This is the law for any case of leprous disease. For an itch for leprous disease in a garment or in a house. And for a swelling or an eruption or a spot. To show when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law for leprous disease. Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, and say to them, When any man has a discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean, and this is the law of the uncleanliness for a discharge, whether his body runs with his discharge, or his body is blocked up by his discharge. It is his uncleanliness. Every bed on which the one with the discharge li lies shall be unclean, and everything on which he sits shall be unclean, and anyone who touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever sits on anything on which the one with the discharge has sat shall wash his clothes and bathe themselves in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever touches the body of the one living with the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And if the one 
with the discharge spits on someone who is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And any saddle on which the one with the discharge rides shall be unclean, and whoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. And whoever carries such things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. Anyone whom the one with the discharge touches without having rinsed his hands in water shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And the earthenware vessels that the one with the discharge touches shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when the one with the discharge is cleansed of his discharge, then he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his body in fresh water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take two turtle doves, or two pigeons, and come before Yahweh to the tent, sorry, to the entrance of the tent of meeting and give them to the priests and the priest shall use them one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh for his discharge and if a man has an omission of semen he shall bathe his whole body in water and be unclean until evening and every garment and every skin on which the semen comes shall be washed with water and be unclean until evening and if a man lies with a woman and as an omission of semen, both of them shall bathe themselves in water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman has a discharge, and the discharge in her body is blood, then she, she shall be in her menstrual impurity for seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything on which she lies during her menstrual impurity shall be unclean. Everything on which she sits shall be unclean, and whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening and whoever touches anything on which he sits shall be un shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening whether it is the bed or anything on which he sits when he touches it he shall be unclean until the evening and if any man lies with her and her menstrual impurity comes upon him he shall be unclean seven days and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean if a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, not at the time of her menstrual impurity, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her impurity, all the days of the discharge she shall continue in uncleanliness. And in the days of her impurity, she shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies, all, in all, sorry, all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her impurity, and everything on which she sits shall be unclean, as in the days of her menstrual impurity. And whoever touches these things shall be unclean, and shall, and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and touch. Whoops. Bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, she shall count for herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take her to take two turtle doves or two pigeons and bring them to the priest to the entrance of the tent of meeting. And the priest shall use one of the sin one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her before Yahweh for her unclean discharge. Thus you shall keep the people of Israel separate from their uncleanliness, lest they die in their uncleanliness by defiling my tabernacle that is in their midst. This is the law of him who has a discharge, and for him who has an omission of semen becoming unclean thereby. As for her who is unwell with her menstrual impurity, that is, for anyone male or female who has a discharge, and for the man who lies with the woman who is unclean. Blessed art thou, Donai, the new king of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Donai, give the Torah, Bukha thou, Donai, and the new Malach, Holo, Masha, Natan, Lenutra, and Emet, Vaishi, Lom, Natan, Betta, Kenya, Bukha thou, Donai, and Atin. Ha, well, that's it, everybody. Hope you all have a great night, and if